Good morning, Green Gang. How are we all doing? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys had a fairly decent Christmas considering everything that's going on and I just wanted to wish you guys a happy new year hopefully fresh starts for us all the vaccine's actually being rolled out today so hopefully things will change from here on out so yesterday I posted on my Instagram stories asking you guys what kind of content you guys wanted to see because I am so ready to just get back on track I I tried to take some time off for like the last week or so and the last couple of days have just been driving me insane I feel so weird like not having anything to do so I'm just ready to get back on the content train I am so excited there's been a few changes in my life and I have a lot more free time and personal space on my hands so yeah it feels good to be back and I'm so excited to be bringing you guys a what I eat in a day video today yeah let's get going the first thing that I'm going to eat today is overnight oats I've already got it um soaking I had actually intended to film this video a while ago but <laughs> I I don't know my mood just wasn't my head wasn't in the right place so I actually filmed me making it a while back so that's the footage that I'm going to insert for breakfast today but this is actually what I'm going to be eating today as well and I'll show you guys just like this that I am eating the same thing today and yeah then we will move on to lunch but I'm so excited I'm also going to film a, a style video today maybe I won't tell you guys what it is but I'm going to basically be recreating outfits inspired by somebody whose style I absolutely love. I feel like everybody loves her style and I wanted to ask you guys on here for recommendations as well. Thank you guys for all of your recommendations yesterday in terms of what content you'd like to see. There were some really good ideas in there and I'm just so excited to get started. Also I painted my nails yesterday and I feel like this is the best job I've ever done. I feel like they look proper profesh. I just wanted to say now thank you guys so much for sticking around. I know things have been very turbulent on my channel and I just appreciate the understanding from you guys with everything that's going on with me um and i really really appreciate the support so thank you thank you thank you let's go eat breakfast i'm really hungry so i'm gonna make some oats overnight oats basically soaked oats i'm gonna let them soak for a little bit but i thought i'd show you how i make mine because i personally think they taste really good so let's get it we're gonna start with the essentials oats obviously <laughs> get out my big tub of health powder things i'm gonna want some chia seeds to be honest guys i don't really focus on them um, measurements i just kind of put what i think like what suits me kind of thing so maca powder need some sultanas or raisins in there and i put them in before, like to soak with the rest of it because they get really soft and yummy i don't know i like the texture i then go in with this raw fusion plant-based protein and it's vanilla flavor vanilla bean flavor just because i want to get a bit of protein in and gain a bit of weight so that's why i add this and also it tastes really nice it's like a bit of a sweetener i don't put a lot though because it's very sweet otherwise it can get quite sickly sweet and peanut butter powder um i usually don't use the chocolate mix one but this is all i have left and to be honest it doesn't really taste that different i feel like this definitely makes me farty though but we won't talk about that <laughs> I always add a little bit of salt in mine just because I like the way it balances out the sweet. Mix it all together. Oops, I've just spilled that everywhere. So I mix all the dry ingredients first so that they don't stick to the liquid when I pour it in to soak. Then I put some dairy-free milk. I'm just going to mix these two because I don't want to use loads of this because it's expensive. But I want still a bit of the creaminess from it. Mix this and this. And then I'll either put water or coconut water, just a little bit, like this. And then just mix it all together. Literally just cover it with cling film and let it soak for like, I don't know, 15 minutes in the fridge. And in it goes. Let's not talk about the state of my fridge, please. Thank you very much. Hello. For the finishing touches, you're going to need some blueberries, some tin peaches. I am a child. I love these, so gotta be done oh the lighting's so much better now sorry about earlier and some hemp seeds and basically whatever toppings you want you can have banana like fruit whatever this is just how i like to make mine okay okay so first thing to do is make sure it is the right consistency for you i like mine a little bit more liquidy so that's perfect throw the bloops in oh yeah to finish it off all you're gonna want is a little sprinkling of hemp seeds, get that extra protein, and look how pretty it looks as well. And that's it, that's my little overnight oats bowl. Beautiful. 
beautiful. What's up guys? Right, breakfast was delicious, but that was a few hours ago and I'm not gonna lie, I am hungry. I had intended on making a tofu scramble. Wow, you guys are wonky, hold on. In fact, I'm pretty sure I recorded myself making it when I recorded that other, um, those other clips, but I can't find it anywhere. And we can't have a tofu scramble today anyway because there's no tofu in the house. I did go to Waitrose and I couldn't find any tofu, it was all completely sold out. So, we're gonna do a bougie sausage sandwich instead. I'm hoping I've got some of the nice bread. Right, first things first, for this specific sausage sandwich, I really like these sausages. They are the Plant Pioneers Cumberland sausages, and they're made from mushrooms, I believe, mostly. I did try some Tesco ones, I think Plant Chef or something recently, and they were delicious, but there isn't a Tesco's here that I can't get to without a car but hopefully I'm gonna have a car in the next month or two, so that should be great. But um, yeah, I really like these sausages, so I'm gonna put these on first. Whilst the pan is heating up, because I like to get it hot before putting the oil in, that's what dad taught me. I'm gonna prep the onion. I'm gonna use a red onion. Sometimes I use white, sometimes I use red. It depends on how funky I'm feeling. Today I'm feeling extra funky. <laughs> I know I'm gonna be crying in about 0.2 seconds. I'm gonna do like caramelized fried onion you feel you dig so I like you know like those thin little slithers of onion that you get at hot dog stands not that I've ever had a hot dog but you know them ones there that's that's the look we're going for today guys I'm gonna get a smaller pan and get that heating up for the onions right, the pan's quite hot so I'm gonna throw a little, little slither of olive oil in there let that heat up Right, let's get them sausages on, shall we? Let them cook slowly first. I'm gonna put the lid on. And I'm gonna start on the onions. A little bit of olive oil once again. I would use coconut oil for the onions actually to give it some flavor, but we don't have any. Gonna need a little bit of soy sauce. Just a little bit. Liquid smoke is really good for the onions. Gives it like a barbecue-y flavor, smoked flavor, and a little bit of agave nectar for some sweetness to caramelize. Oh my god, that smells so good! I'm so excited to eat this. Sometimes I put cherry tomatoes in there and it is delicious or like little plum tomatoes. I'm gonna add some black pepper just because it's nice with the sausages. Oh shh. Just an equal pinch of flaked salt. Just because I'm a salt addict. But yeah, this is honestly, I'm proud of my creation, okay? You're gonna need a knife and fork because this is a messy eat, but so worth it. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna enjoy this. And yes, I did make some for dad. Don't worry, he's just in the shower, but his is over there. Can 
I get a rating out of 10 for the sausage sandwich? No. What's missing? Nothing. Why not a 10? We got to be heavy. Yeah, we didn't want to eat too much because it's already 10 to 4 and tonight I'm making lasagna, so personally, I want to be hungry for the lasagna. Might even make a, a cheeky salad with it. And I'll show you guys how to make the best vinaigrette mustard dressing ever. Anyway, I'm going to stop being cocky now. That's how food makes me feel. I love a bit of food. It's so good. Catch you guys at dinner. Peace out. A-town down. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening guys. I can't believe how quickly the day has gone. It is already 20 past 6. So I'm going to get started on the lasagna. Um, I've got the recipe written on my phone. I don't know if any of you guys follow Gaz Oakley or Avant Garde Vegan, but it's his recipe. So I'm not taking credit for this recipe, but check him out. He's an amazing chef. And yeah, all credit goes to him because this lasagna is amazing. Right, let's get started. <laughs> Hey guys, so I thought I'd do a voiceover for this part just because the TV was on in the background and I was tired and I just thought it would be easier to record a voiceover, especially because there's so much going on with this dish. So basically the first thing we're going to start making is the bechamel sauce, which is like the kind of creamy white sauce. And for that you're going to need to cut a whole white onion into eight pieces. We're then going to take a whole litre of dairy-free milk if you're plant-based. I like Oatly because it's super creamy, so you just put the whole of that in a pot, pan, pot, pot. <laughs> And then from there we're going to just put the onions in and then after that the recipe calls for a bay leaf. I put in a few just because I like quite a bit of flavour. A little touch of nutmeg and some black peppercorns. And then you're just going to want to let that kind of simmer on a low heat just to kind of get the flavours going. Okay let's get started on the ragu. So first things first we want to finely chop a red onion once we're done with the onion we're going to set that aside in a bowl for later and get started on the celery you're going to want four stalks of celery and again we're just going to finely chop that. I like to slice it once down the middle long ways and then just cut it into really small slices, <laughs> is that the right word? Into really small pieces. So once your onions and celery are chopped you're going to want to whack a little bit of oil in a pot. I'm using quite a deep pot because there's going to be quite a lot of um, food for the lasagna so you want something big enough to be able to stir it all around and stuff like that. Once the olive oil is warm enough, just chuck in the celery and onion on a low heat, stir it around a little bit and kind of just let that soften and cook down. You can add salt here if you want to, to add some flavor and kind of help it cook down. The only reason I don't is because dad can't really eat salt, he's got high blood pressure, but I would recommend throwing some salt in there for some extra flavor. Before I forget, I'm just going to put the oven on. I put it at about 180, I've got a fan oven. Just get that preheating so that it's ready for when the lasagna is good to go. The next step for the ragu is garlic, and I use a lot. I love garlic, I love flavor. So I'm using about half a bulb, maybe just a little bit more. You know how to do garlic, guys. It's pretty straightforward. Just peel it, and then I'm gonna mince it into the onion and, I was gonna say courgette, into the onion and celery mix. Once the garlic's prepped, you're just going to mince that into the celery and onion mix and let that cook down a little bit longer. Let it get nice and soft and let the flavours all blend together. Okay, now we're doing the courgette. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut each end off and then we're going to use one whole courgette. I think in Gaz's recipe he leaves it a bit more chunky but I prefer it to be less chunky so kind of all the flavours blend together and it's just mushy. I know that might not be for everyone so again you can just kind of cut this however you like but I like to cut it in quite small pieces so that everything just kind of blends together so yeah we're gonna cut up the courgette I'm then gonna put that aside in the same bowl that I put the onion and celery in previously, just so that I have some space to cut up the aubergine. And then we're going to do the same thing with half of an aubergine. So 
So coming back to our big pot, I'm just checking that all the veggies so far have softened nicely and I'm going to add a bit of soy sauce because like I said before, I'm not using salt in this recipe. Yeah, once I've done that, I'm going to chuck in the aubergine and courgette and I'm going to let that cook down for a little bit now as well. Here I'm just throwing in some mixed herbs. I think the recipe calls for three tablespoons, but again, just put however much you want in there because it all depends on you and your taste. Um, so I'm just gonna give it a little stir just to get the herbs kind of properly mixed in. From there, we're gonna add in some plant-based mints. I'm just using this dried one from Holland and Barrett, but you can get really nice frozen ones from like Waitrose, Sainsbury's. So again, just depending on your preference, I just use this because it's cheap and it's easy. And to be honest, in this, it tastes just as good. You're then gonna wanna add two tins of chopped tomatoes and some tomato paste. And you can also add a bit more salt here if you want. Just keep tasting the food and see how it tastes to you and you'll know kind of what you need to add. Give it a little stir, let it all soak. And I'm just gonna put the lid on the pot and leave that to simmer and really get the flavors going for a little while. And then we can get started on the roux, which is for the bechamel sauce. So for this, you're gonna need some butter or margarine. I'm using the flora, flora, I don't know, it's vegan. <laughs> um, and you're going to want to melt that down and then mix in equal parts plain flour until it forms like a weird paste you guys will see <laughs> and then you kind of just cook the flour out I'm just eyeballing this but again you can kind of measure it out so that you know you've got equal parts and when throwing the flour in I do it bit by bit just so that there's no lumps and so that I can see as I go if that makes sense because I know the kind of consistency that it needs to end up being which you guys will see in a second also just make sure that you keep it on a low heat because you don't want to burn it once we get to about this consistency, this is kind of what we're looking for. Just wanna make sure that the flour's cooked out. Um, Gaz recommends leaving it to cook out for about a minute or so, making sure that you're constantly stirring. So that's that. And then we're going to grab that milk mixture that we made earlier that's been simmering away. Drain out the onion, the bay leaves, and the peppercorns. And then from there, you just wanna slowly, like bit by bit, add that into the butter flour mixture. If you're like me and you don't have a whisk, I just use a fork and it works just as well. <laughs> I think the key is doing it bit by bit and stirring just to make sure you get all the lumps out every time so that you have a smooth and creamy mixture. That's basically the key thing that I've learned. I've made this a few times now and I've made a few mistakes in the past. So just make sure you are continuously stirring and only adding in bit by bit and stir until it's smooth before you add in the next part. Once you finish pouring all the infused milk into your butter flour mixture and it's looking nice and creamy like this, we're just gonna add some nutritional yeast and some vegan cheese. I like the one from Waitrose, I think it's really nice, it tastes pretty good. And this is just gonna give it that extra kind of cheesy flavor. And still keeping that on a low heat, we're just gonna stir until the mixture is thick enough. So again, depending on how you like it, I like mine quite thick so it's super creamy and kind of gooey if that makes sense. I mean, you can't tell me that doesn't look good. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and now that the ragu is looking nice and juicy, you can see all the juices cooking in the bottom, it is time to layer up the lasagna and put it in the oven. So it goes ragu, bechamel sauce, lasagna sheets, and repeat until the tray's full. And if your lasagna sheets don't fit perfectly in your baking tray, is that what it's called? Baking dish, then you can just kind of snap them. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as there's just some pasta there. It's fine. It's all gonna get cooked and mixed up anyway. For the last layer, you don't put any lasagna sheets on the top. You just smother that baby in bechamel sauce and that's gonna get all crispy and cheesy on the top and it's just gonna be divine. Watching this now is making me wanna eat this all over again. And now it's time to get that bad boy in the oven. And I think I left it in for 45 minutes. Again, depends how you like it. I think minimum you should leave it in for about 35 to 40 minutes just to make sure everything's cooked through. But I like mine to be a little bit crispy on the top. So I'll leave it in a little bit longer. 
Now let's make that salad dressing that I promised you guys. So we're gonna need some olive oil. Again, I'm eyeballing it. I don't know the measurements and it all depends how you like it. Some people like their dressing more oily, more vinegary. You guys catch the drift. So if you have a glass this size, you can kind of see how much I'm putting in. So I'm also gonna take some balsamic glaze or reduction, or you can just use balsamic vinegar. We're then gonna add in some mustard. I personally love whole grain mustard, Dijon mustard, that little peppery spicy kick is just so delicious especially in a salad dressing. And then the real trick is to add in some garlic powder or garlic granules or fresh garlic if you want. I just prefer to use granules or powder and a touch of cumin. Now, when I say a touch, I mean just a little bit because if you put too much in, it will be overpowering, but it makes such a difference. And if you're not gonna use honey, if you're, if you're plant-based, we can go for agave nectar, which is what I tend to use. And last but not least, I almost forgot to add the apple cider vinegar. Just to kind of cut the oil down a bit, if you've got balsamic vinegar instead of glaze, then you should be fine. But if not, it's always good to use a bit of vinegar just to cut through the oil. Give it a little mix, give it a little taste, and see if there's anything that you think is missing or there could be more of. If not, you've basically got a vegan honey mustard dressing, and it is so good. Guess what? It's time to take the lasagna out of the oven and let it stand and cool. If you're like me and you can't wait, I left it for like maybe 10 minutes and I was like, no, I'm hungry. As you guys can see, it's falling apart. If you don't want that to happen, let it cool for a bit longer. But this is the beauty that I'm having for dinner and I'm so excited. Hey guys, what's up? So, some of you guys might be able to tell the flat's rearranged. I've got this ugly ass plug board behind me, which I'm gonna have to get like a print or something to cover it up, because I just, that is not, not doing it for me. Anyway, um, I just wanted to pop in and end off the what I ate in a day video. Let me know if any of you guys tried the recipes. Let me know which was your favorite. And oh, I had so many things to say and now my mind's gone blank. But yeah, I've just spent the day rearranging and spring cleaning the flat and I'm exhausted. I've just put on this new tracksuit that I got from Urban Outfitters. It's by EX Franz. Um, got the matching bottoms. I've got PJ chilling, keeping me warm. And I'm just about to watch the sky change colours because the sun's going to set soon. So should be lovely. I'd love to know if you tried any of the recipes or if you enjoyed any and I'd also like to know if there's anything you've seen me eating before that you know I've cooked that you'd like me to show you guys how to make. Let me know if you'd prefer me to do it more so just showing you what I eat rather than it being like a cooking video because I'm aware the video is quite long. I hope you guys didn't mind obviously I didn't give like exact measurements but I feel like cooking is really subjective depending on you know your taste buds and your palate so and depending on what you eat as well so i hope you guys didn't mind that but i really hope that you did enjoy the video don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like that from me and if you are already subscribed and you seem to be missing out on my videos try hitting the little bell beside the subscribe button because that should help you be notified for when i am actually posting videos which will be a lot more often from now on so um yeah i really enjoyed making this video and Oh, I also wanted to say that I don't want you guys to think that I eat like this every single day. Like I don't always have the time. I don't always eat like all these amazing meals throughout the day. It just depends on my time. But I definitely want to do more videos like this because it forces me to eat. Well, it gives me an excuse to have the time to cook because that's what I'm doing for work, right? So yeah, I'm really excited to um, show you guys some other recipes that I have enjoyed making. I really want to show you guys this tofu katsu curry that I make. It is so good. Um, so maybe I'll show you guys that in the next one along with some other meals. But like I said, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me make. And I'll at least give it a go if I haven't made it before and I don't know how to. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys all in the next one. Until next time. Bye. Mwah.